Okay, so we'll wait here until we see which room Jessica and her John check into. And then we'll sneak up to it, keep an eye on things, and make sure Jessica doesn't try to kill the guy after she has sex with him. And if she tries, we'll stop her. Tonight's the night we're gonna find out if Jess is a serial killer or not. Hurry and unlock that door, girl. So I can't wait to do you. You're gonna earn your money tonight. You've got about eleven to give and plenty of ways to give it. What a sleaze bag. If he wasn't so gross, he wouldn't have to pay for it. But using Jessica that way, Spike's the one who's really choosing Jessica. Not after tonight. Not if we can help it. Give me a sink, Jay. I'll take care of it. No, you better not be so out of it you can't give me what I want. I paid Spike big bucks for you because he said you're worth it. And you better be or else. Come on. We have to make sure that nothing else bad happens to Jessica. Mr. Crane, Ms. Bennett, we've been expecting you. Mr. Alistair's secretary made all the arrangements for your night out together. It looks like Alistair finally kept his word for once, huh? I'll go see that your table meets all of Mr. Alistair's requirements. Thank you. Looks like my grandfather went all out, huh? Yeah, well, he's proud of you. You won that first stage in the competition between you and Chad. Yeah, well, I plan on winning, period. You know, then Alistair can name me to take over Crane Industries instead of my half-brother, Chad. Yeah, you really should have seen me in there today. You would have been so proud of me. I rocked that meeting. That's what you said. Right. Right, enough shop talk. Tonight is about you, the woman that I love, and about me, the guy who loves you. Dark side must be running on reduced power after the excesses of Halloween. That's the only reason I can think of to explain my Fox and K are not over and out by now. Hmm. If I were a wagering witch, I would bet you had something to do with the fact that Fox and K are still an item in Nora. Yeah. Hmm. I know you'd like them to stay together and live happily ever after, but I'm afraid even you can't make that happen. No, once Kay insisted that I cast that spell to make Fox more successful, and Kay gave up any chance of them having a future together. They take longer than I anticipated, but those two are bound for Splitsville. <laughs> Look, I know you hate to leave Harmony, but it can't be helped. You risked exposure going back to be with Ms. Crane for Lopez Fitzgerald's funeral. Well, it was worth it. Sheridan just lost the love of a life and the best chance of getting her son back. Ms. Crane will be fine. You and James are another story. Word is the mob was closing in. You and James are being relocated just in the nick of time. I hate living on the run. I hate having to change my identity. Always looking over my shoulder. Can't even love a woman for fear of putting her in danger. You're talking about Miss Crane, aren't you? Hey, she wanted to come with you and your son. And God knows I wanted her to, but I couldn't do that to Sheridan. I love her too much to put her through any more hurt. Please, God. Let Ethan live a long, long time. Please let him be back to his old self, mind, body, and spirit, so that Gwen doesn't have to suffer the loss of the man that she loves when she's already lost a son and a daughter. Amen. join you. Of course, Eve. Yes. Just saying a prayer for Ethan. I thought that I'd do the same. Is that bad all? Well, medical science has done all they can for him now. All we can do is wait and pray. Why does there have to be so much pain? So much loss? I mean, 
Gwen may lose Ethan. I've lost Luis, my son, and now... James, we're gonna be leaving soon. We're gonna go live in a brand new place where you can make a whole bunch of new friends. I wish I could go with you, but I can't. But just know that I'll be thinking about you all the time, every day, because I love you so much. Come on, James. It's time to go. Bye, sweetheart. Okay, so, I want to toast you. Oh, Yes, okay. this is to you, one of the women that I love. One of the women? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, without you and Maria, nothing in my life would really make sense, would it? Oh. Well, I'm sure I speak for Maria when I say that having you in our lives has been a dream come true. Thank you. Better enjoy Fox's love now, Kay, because it's not gonna last much longer. Well, what? Don't blame me, Endor. It was Kay's decision to risk her happiness with Fox so that he could be successful in business. Now, you little imp. Huh? Uh, this must be for you. Fox? Yeah. That's, uh, that's my way of, of saying thank you, just for being you. <laughs> well, open it, open it. I can't wait to see what I got you. <laughs> I mean, if, if you like what it is that I... If you like what I got you is what I meant. Let's see. Oh, Endora, you've really done it now. If that's what I think it is, and Fox and Kay get engaged and then break up, Due to my spell, your ring shot will just make it all the more painful for them. Are you coming over to the dark side with Mummy after all, huh? <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to see what you got me. Makes two of us. I just hate leaving the hospital, Sam. Hey, we saw him and we prayed for him. I don't know what else we can do. Besides, visiting hours are over. We need to take care of ourselves so we can be there for him tomorrow. However long it takes for our son to make it back to full strength. If he doesn't die first. Listen, don't say that. Our son is going to pull through this. I know he is. From your lips straight to God's ear. I know I haven't always been the best mother, but I love my children, and I only want what's best for them. I just worry who I might lose next. And I can't pretend to know what you're feeling. Losing Marty and Luis must be just devastating. 
But you're a strong young woman, Sheridan. You will get over this and you will find love again. But does the kind of love Luis and I had ever come again? I believe it does. I don't think there's just one person out there for everyone. For example, Julian and I. I loved him so much all those years ago. And then when I lost him and I thought my baby was dead, I was devastated. I thought that I would never love again. And then I met TC. And even though we're not together, we did have a beautiful love and one that I'm very grateful for. I guess every love is different. Yes. And when you do find another love, it may not compare with what you had with Luis, but it doesn't have to. You'll be loved and you will love in a whole new way. But some people never find love to begin with. I mean, why should I be lucky enough to find love twice? I think some people don't have their hearts open to it. But I have no doubt that you will. You're a beautiful, special girl. And you were far too loving not to find love again. To take James's father, for instance. What about him? Well, he seems very nice. And you obviously love his son very much. Even if there were something, I I can't be involved with Chris. Why not? Chris and James have left Harmony to start a new life. A new life that doesn't include me. I never thought I'd be able to fall in love with a woman again after I botched my marriage with Maureen. But meeting Sheridan, just being around her, watching her with my boy James, <laughs> changed all that. I wasn't looking to fall in love, but before I knew it, she was in my heart like she's always been there. I just wish things could be different. James could have the best mother ever, and I could have a second chance at being a husband like I was supposed to with Maureen. Sorry. Maybe someday you'll have a chance with Miss Crane. <laughs> we both know that's impossible. The mob won't be dead. My future is a life of hiding in the witness protection program, not living free with Sheridan. Yeah, boss. I'm on him. Don't worry. He won't get away. He's as good as dead. Let's go say hello. That's... This is, I just wasn't expecting anything. You know, I just thought, you know. Uh, I can't wait to see what it is. Me either. And Dora, you little minx. Getting Fox and Kay engaged so they'll be even more bereft when their love goes up the spout. Genius. Evil genius. <laughs> so you are Mummy's little witch after all, aren't you? <laughs> It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Is it? I mean, I mean, you like it? It's good? Yeah. Right. Well, uh, what's that? Um, Fox, he, he gave me this beautiful bracelet and it has this little charm on it with Maria's name on it. Ah. Uh. <laughs> nice. Uh, thank you so much. Oh. Maria thanks you too. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, Dora. You made a last-minute substitution, didn't you? Yeah. Well, you may be able to change a ring into a charm bracelet, but you cannot change the fact that Fox and Kay's love is all but doomed. What is a special occasion? Yes, um, what is it? Well, um, huh. You know, the, uh, the bracelet was, um, <laughs> was a bit of a surprise, you know. But uh, dinner for two is actually, if you can believe this, a gift from Alistair uh, to me for winning the first stage of my competition of Fox versus Chad to see who takes over Crane Industries. Congratulations, darling. Mm. I know that you will defeat Chad many, many times. And 
Crane Industries, it's your birthright. You deserve to run it more than anyone else. Yeah, you know, especially now that Ethan's not a crane, right? I was trying to pay you a compliment. No, I know, it's good, it's fine, it's just... When I was growing up, see, uh, Ethan was groomed to take over Crane Industries as soon as Alistair got called back to hell. No questions asked. Now I, I have to take the Alistair challenge to prove myself. So that's how it works. Okay, it's the situation, Fox, it's not you. I don't think Ethan would be too interested in running Crane Industries at the moment, even if he were still the heir because he's in the hospital fighting for his life. Oh my God. Whoa, whoa, what happened? Ethan ingested a drug that Teresa was trying to use to kill Alistair, and he might die or be permanently brain damaged. Whoa. So, so hold on a second. Uh, what you're saying is, is uh, Teresa tried to kill Alistair and actually may have ended up killing Ethan instead? I'm afraid so. It just goes to show what getting involved with a wrong woman can do to a man. I'm sorry, Dad. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Mom, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to just sit here and rag on Ethan, you know? I mean, he's my brother. I love him. It's just all that preferential treatment you gave him growing up. You know, it made it hard not to resent him. Fox, we've been through this. I already admitted that I was wrong to favor Ethan over you and your sisters. Yeah, the way you talk about him still kind of makes me feel second rate, though, sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I really love this song. Do you want to dance? Yeah. Listen, don't you worry about him, okay? He's just a little edgy right now. Alistair's got him going through the grind at work. I just thought that Fox had forgiven me, you know, for favoring Ethan. Forgiveness is one thing. Forgetting's another. It still hurts. I'm sure you did the best you could. It's all any parent can do. There's no guarantee of a problem for your kid. Look what I'm going through with Jessica. Which, you know, which reminds me, I'm gonna call home and check on her, okay? do this to her. Once Spike gets her high on drugs, Jessica doesn't know what she's doing. I hate seeing Jessica like this. Well, I hate seeing it too, but we can't intervene. At least, not yet. We just have to keep an eye out and make sure things don't get out of control and that Jessica doesn't end up killing that creep. Although, I think that any guy who treats a woman the way Freddie is treating Jessica deserves to be butchered in my book. Dios, poor Jessica. If she weren't high, no way would Jessica let a guy treat her like that. I wonder if that's what happens. The drugs suddenly wear off enough to where Jessica's back in the moment, and she thinks she's being raped. So she kills the guy in self-defense. Maybe, but, but I hope it's not the case. Well, I hope not either, but if she is a killer, then Spike is the one who should pay. I really don't see that happening. Uh, Spike, we, we were just... Uh, watching Jess earn her money? We were trying to protect her. Oh, really? You really like watching her do it, don't you, Simone? <laughs> of course, you'd like it a lot better if Jess was with another woman, wouldn't you? You know? Damn, are you into women, too? No. I have a boyfriend. Ah, oh, too bad, honey. Giving it away for free. You can make some serious change if you can't work for me. Go to hell. I'll tell you what, why don't you shut up? I'm getting sick of both of you messing with Jess. You understand? Let her go, and we'll leave you alone. I got a better idea. How about I keep Jess and lose you two? Move it. I'm going to put a stop to you messing with my business once and for all. Eat on the lamp. I'm sorry. 
For what? You haven't stepped on my toes once. No, no, I'm, I'm not talking about that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry for letting my mom push my buttons like that, you know? We're out celebrating my victory at work. I'm supposed to be here playing Family Feud, you know? No, it's okay. Look, <laughs> no one understands mother trouble more than me. Just don't let it get to you, because I did, and it drove me to mess up big time. Yeah. I just, I just hate that I'm insensitive to her like that, you know? Ethan could be dying, and, and, and what do I do? I bring up bad memories from the past and tell her that she used to favor him. It's just stupid. Okay, well, why don't we tell our parents that we'll go to the hospital tonight and we'll see him? That'll make her feel better. Yeah, well, I mean, we could, but we, we really can't, though. You know, visiting hours are over, so... Oh. There goes that idea. Mm, well, why don't we tell them that uh, we'll go to the church and we'll pray for him? Not tonight. Why not? Well, because tonight's supposed to be for us. I mean, we can pray for Ethan. I think that we should pray for him, but we don't have to go to church to do it, right? Yeah, but what about getting things back on track with your mom? I'll take care of that. Tonight is a celebration of us, and I mean, who knows? Maybe, um, even another surprise. <laughs> what? Tell me. No, you'll see. You'll <laughs> see. Jessica's still not answering the phone. Oh, Sam, she's she's exhausted. We all are. Just let her sleep, and you can check on her as soon as you get home. Fox and Kay seem so happy together. Yes, they do, don't they? No, he's, he's, he's been good for her, you know? She's different around him. You know, more grounded, mature, self-assured. You know, Fox has it's been great for Kay. I think he brings out the best in her, don't you think? You know, we tried to help Fancy and Noah to stay a couple, but we didn't get very far. You know, maybe Fox and Kay is the romance that'll work out after all. Not if I have anything to do with it. Where are you taking us? Long-term storage. Here. What does that mean? What that means is, I'm getting sick of you two meddling with my business. But well, we're just trying to help Jessica. Really? Well, no good deed goes unpunished. Inside, no, no, ladies. No, no, Both no. of you, no. in there. No, no, wait, wait! You can't leave us in here! Yes, I can, ladies. This is what you get for messing with me. Simone, we're trapped. I know, we'll call for help. Oh, shoot, no service. Me either. No what? Let me think. Um, there's got to be a way out of here so we can get out in time to stop Jessica if she is the one killing those Johns. Look, girl, don't just lie there, kiss me. <laughs> I'm gonna work it. Now you better start giving it because you're getting, girl. <laughs> Damn it, slut. I've made good money for you. You better start earning it. Now get up. Give me some love, or I'm really gonna get rough on you. You go back to the B and B and get yourself a good night's sleep. And I'll come and check on you in the morning. Thanks, Eve. I am tired. I'm sorry to interrupt, Dr. Russell. It's about the little boy that you treated tonight in the ER, James. Is something wrong with him? What happened? There's an urgent call for the boy's father. The woman says it's an emergency. Well, James has already been released. It's my understanding he and his father were leaving town. Well, let me talk to the caller. Maybe I can help. All right. Thanks. Hello, this is Sheridan Crane. I'm close friends with Christopher Booth. May I help you with something? I'm sorry, ma'am. I need to speak directly to Mr. Booth. Why? Who are you? If Ryan Burns is there, I can speak to him. Oh, my God, you're with the Bureau, too. I never said that. It's OK. I, I know you need to be careful, but you can trust me. Now, I know that Chris left with James and Mr. Burns a little while ago. Please, is something wrong? Tell me if Chris and James are in trouble. Please, you've got to tell me. I 
Your train will be leaving soon. The Bureau's doctor for James will meet us when we get to Boston. Do you or your son want anything before we get on board? Answers. Where are we headed once we get to Boston? I can't divulge that. You and your son will see when we get there. Doesn't matter where you're headed, Bruce. You'll never make it. Out of here. I'm trying. Hurry, we have to get to the motel before Jessica kills that man. If she's the killer. Don't rush me. And don't forget that Spike will be gunning for us when he finds out that we've escaped. That is it. Oh, thank God. Any sign of Spike? No. The coast is clear. Come on. We've got to get back to that motel room and to Jess before it's too late. to talk about Fox. <laughs> you don't want us to be together, blah, blah, blah. Only you're too late because we're a couple now. Well, I'd reconsider that, Kay. <laughs> Would you save the veiled threats for somebody who cares, Ivy? Because I'm not listening to you. Fox and I, we're staying together and there's nothing you can do about it. Kay, you know me better than that. Forget the spell working against you, Kay. If Poison Ivy doesn't want you two to be together, you won't be. <laughs> Lennox residence. Hmm? A collect call from Edna Wallace. Oh, please. This is the third time she's tried to reach me in three days. <sighs> she's in jail, you say? Oh, well, if the police have any sense, they'll keep her there. But no strip searches. She'd enjoy those. No, I certainly won't. I certainly won't accept the charges. And you can tell Edna to leave me alone and stop bothering me. Please. Um, yeah. if, if, if it isn't enough to have Norma yes. waiting to strike at any moment, but now we've got Edna Mas. Wallace out there Mas. with us on her mind. Mas. Mas. Yeah, well, later. Mas. Anyway, I can't worry about them now. I have to look in on Ivy and Kay. You're right, Ivy. I do know you. I know how selfish and maniacal you can be. And what a hypocrite you are for thinking that I'm not good enough for Fox, when it's for damn sure that you're not good enough for my dad. So why don't we just call it even and just drop it, okay? I already have one son in the hospital fighting for his life because of a conniving bitch. I will not let Fox suffer the same fate, so just consider yourself warned. Right back at you, dear. Fox and I are together, and we are going to stay together, so you damn well better get used to it. Are Chris and James in trouble? I'm sorry, Miss Crane. I can't give information to just anyone. I'm not just anyone. Chris and I are... Chris and I are close friends. I know that Chris is in the witness protection program because the mob is after him. I also know that Agent Burns has taken Chris and James to be relocated because it's not safe for them to be in harmony any longer. That's why I'm calling. The mob is hot on Chris's trail. Oh, no. I tried reaching Agent Burns, but there's a problem with his cell phone. He needs to know that a hitman is on his way to Harmony to kill both Chris and his son tonight. Tonight? Do you have Mr. Booth's cell phone number so I can warn him? Miss Crane, are you there? Sherry, what's going on? I have to get to Chris and James before it's too late. Too late for what? Are you okay? 
Just again, where's that John you were with? Simone? Paloma? Jessica, what happened? Are you all right? Where's the guy? Guy? Oh, my God. <laughs> Jessica, what did that man do to you? What? Your face. D did he hit you? Damn it, slut, I paid good money for you. You better start earning it. <laughs> He wouldn't stop. He kept on and on until I couldn't take any more. And and what happened? Where is he now? I don't know. I, I don't remember. What? He hurt me. I'm glad he's gone. Made it with time to spare. Take a good look, son. Take a good look at Harmony, because we'll never see it again. Shit, I didn't realize my cell phone was off. Just as well, cell phone calls can be intercepted, used to triangulate your location. Not a good thing if you and James want to leave Harmony in one piece. Is that your roundabout way of telling me I shouldn't be calling Sharon? You said your goodbyes at the hospital. Why not leave it at that? You're right. My cell phone stays off. Why make this any harder than it already is? Goodbye, Sheridan. Why did my heart always belong to you? Chris's phone is still off. I have a car waiting outside to take you and James to the train station. They have to leave now? Yes, ma'am. But it's too soon after James was hit by that drunk driver. Our physician spoke with Dr. Russell. Both agree James is well enough to travel. Even so, James needs to be settled in for the night. Sheridan's sure, got a point. Can't we wait till morning? Negative. You've been here too long already. Just coming back to Harmony put you, Miss Crane, and your son in danger. We can't risk any more holdups. You have to follow the established procedures of the Witness Protection Program. So either you and James leave Harmony with me now, or the Bureau will wash its hands of you both. Oh, please God, let me get to the station and warn Chris that his life is in danger. Time. He kept saying he, he paid good money for me and I wasn't earning it. At first, I was too out of care. And then he pulled me up off the bed and he hit me. What did you do, Jess? <laughs> what did you do when the guy hit you? <laughs> no, he hit me. We know that. He wouldn't stop. What did you do? <laughs> he, he kept saying he paid good money for me and I wasn't earning it. He said if I didn't do better, he'd really get robbed. He thought I deserved to be hit. Oh, you know, he's just like all the rest. He hurt me, and I hated him for it. I hated him so much. I wanted him dead. I wanted to kill him. But you didn't. Jess, tell us you didn't do it. He deserves to die. I wanted him dead. I wanted to kill him. But you didn't do it, right? Jess, you didn't kill that John tonight. Oh my God. It is me. I'm the killer. Damn it. Why isn't Jessica answering the phone? Maybe she's in there. No, no. She's there. 
There's no way she'd go back and be with Spike. I mean it, Kay. Stay away from Fox. I will not have both of my son's lives destroyed by scheming selfish women. I checked with the hospital. Ethan's still in critical condition. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. Listen, Mom, Kay and I are going to go to the hospital first thing in the morning. Visiting hours start, so. Thank you, Fox. And listen, uh, what I said earlier, I I'm sorry. You know, um, I don't want you to think that I don't care about Ethan, because I do. He's my brother. I care about him. You know, it's not his fault that you used to give him preferential treatment when we were kids, right? But, you know, like you said, that's all behind us. So um, just move on. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. You know, I, I know I wasn't the best mother, but I keep trying to make up for it. I know you do. Okay. I love you for it, all right? Oh, and I love you too, me too. And I only want the best for you. And I am determined to see that you get it, no matter what. Please, God, keep Chris and James safe from the mob. I'll try calling Chris one more time. You gonna answer that? That's your phone. I thought my phone was slow. Guess not. Hurry and answer. Your life could depend on it. Hello? Oh, thank God you answered. Where are you? I'm on the train. Why? Oh my God, okay. You're in danger. The mob is on to you. You've got to get off the train. Hide. Do whatever it takes to protect yourself and James. What did you say? Sheridan. Sheridan, are you still there? The feds took down a lot of hitmen sent to snuff out this guy. I'm the best. And I'll deliver. In five, four, three. Chris, the mob knows where you are. Get off the train. Get off now. to tell me what you really want. I want that bitch, Kay Bennett, out of my son's life for good. If I see her in this hospital ever again, I swear to God, I'm gonna kill her. What the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> 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 <laughs>